नक्षत्र नेमी नक्षत्री क्षमक श्याम समी वट इज दट मीन दैट्स द वर्ड्स फ्रॉम द थाउजेंड नेम्स ऑफ विष्णु विष्णु सहस्त्र नामा विच मीन्स नक्षत्र नेमी मीन्स ही हु इज वन लाइक द जोडिया नक्षत्री हु इज लाइक द मून हु इज द चीफ ऑफ स्टार्स क्षमक श्याम समी हना हु इज परसिस्टेंटली पेशेंट हु रिमेन्स अलोन आफ्टर द डिल्यूज he who likes the job of creation so when we talk of nakshatras understand we are speaking of the various forms of the great creation itself everything in the nakshatras is the maya of vishnu is the way we experience subjective reality and each one is a point of view which is different from the others and we are a collection or a combination of all these nakshatras every chart has all the nakshatras but some are more focused with planets and points and others are not this is the reason why you ignore certain things while another person next to you is sitting and focusing on only that more and ignoring whatever you are about welcome ladies and gentlemen let's study the nakshatras so what essentially are we talking of when we talk of these 27 constellations of the moon or lunar mansions as they are popularly referred to as the nakshatra arrangement as you can see on the picture there let's just simplify it into what it is we are studying about the basic nakshatra arrangement and the navamsha the ninth divisional chart this is the pie chart which we'll be dissecting step by step into all the series of nakshatra in this complete playlist as we go along so there is the 12 zodiac sign belt right from aries to pisces in the innermost one indicated there next to that is the nakshatra belt the one above it after that the numbering that you see that belt is the pada or the steps pada is also called the feet vishnu is said to be embodied in the feet pada your vishnu stishtatu like it says in the rudra lagunyasa is the feet vishnu resides in the feet the feet is supported by the earth we'll come to all of these esoterics later on nakshatra is the study of esoteric energy so navamsha next to the pada belt the last outermost belt which you see indicated by again zodiac signs is the navamsha pada belt in the navamsha the zodiac is each zodiac is split into nine parts as you can see there right so that's what we are about to study in this um series within vedic astrology the 12 zodiac signs fall within the domain of 27 constellation types also called the nakshatra it is just like zooming into a zodiac sign and into each star within the constellation of the zodiac and how each one affects the theme and the nature of the zodiac like in the picture you see i've just taken a sample here let us say we take a telescope and we focus on the zodiac sign of leo and the leo has all those stars which look like that in the night sky and nakshatra which goes in the navamsha we are split up into nine parts here the zodiac of leo is split into nine parts it goes through the nakshatra of magha to purva falguni and to the first pada of uttara falguni so this is how we cover it nakshatras are basically zooming in into the zodiac so now you are getting almost like micro examination of your zodiac sign we are zooming in these 27 nakshatras are constellations of vedic astrology also known as lunar mansions since they are said to represent the moon mind the manas in sanskrit provide us rich esoteric knowledge of what shades and colors a soul experiences in a given lifetime and what the soul path may be what the motives of the soul wants to achieve perhaps what it needs to love what it needs to let go of release and heal in life 
the navamsha or the ninth divisional chart is considered to be the evolution of soul in maturing years typically after 36 years or the age of saturn maturity so the natal chart and the navamsha divisional chart are the most consulted charts in india probably the ninth division is given a lot of importance also this is just my guess is because vedic astrology is based on a nine planet point system the sun moon mercury venus rahu ketu mars jupiter and saturn and each division here therefore has a different energy signature within a given zodiac within the navamsha each zodiac sign is divided into nine parts of 3 degrees 20 minutes each each nakshatra therefore spans a total of 13 degrees and 20 minutes segment each nakshatra has four divisions of padas padas means in this case steps as a result of this uneven distribution many zodiac signs will spill over to the last padas or into different nakshatras or some will even split in half for example mars mars ruled nakshatras are all split in half between two adjacent zodiac signs the four padas are designated as dharma artha kama and moksha padas showing us the graduation steps of soul evolution the easiest way to grasp a nakshatra and the theme it represents is by understanding the deity of the nakshatra the devic energies that govern that and second by the associated symbols representing each nakshatra we shall examine this in the nakshatra videos the four steps or padas meaning feet in sanskrit and with their associated elements dharma that is the fire element artha the earth element kama the air element and moksha the water element these steps are evolution of the soul path and therefore become our individual experience of our body senses mind seeking achieving faults trials and tribulations and so forth each step or pada alters the nature of our life themes that play out for us individually according to the ruling sign according to the ascendant the moon placement and all the rest of the planets the house placement etc they play out in sets of four three times in a zodiac aries to cancer are the first leo to scorpio are the second Sagittarius to Pisces the third set the Aries to Cancer padas represent the birth and formative energies of the soul path in life the physical appearance talents abilities family home the brahma energies how you are formed how the basic concept of an embodied soul is being sculpted and formed in this life Leo number 5 to Scorpio number 8 padas represent sustenance procreation creativity knowledge love work engagement for the soul path in this life the vishnu energies how you preserve whatever is you have in your life how you create more how you procreate how do you bring forth children in this world how do you take care of your children these houses represent that how the formed individual is now playing out in the external world participation and mixing Sagittarius number 9 to Pisces number 12 padas represent dissemination expenditure service to society dissolution from self into the external the shiva energies how the adult has now matured through meaningful engagement of selfless service higher wisdom deep learning through losses and gains of life how do we all learn we learn through losses and gains folks we don't learn through having tons of money or having that wish list which we all have so as you can see even in this second picture the nakshatras themselves have seem to have a kind of evolution path to them so the first four of them aries to cancer as i spoke about is all about the brahma the formative energies right from the time you're born to your family these create the formative energies for you and the second four of them the vishnu what i call the bottom one as you can see 
the preservative energies the preservative energies is number 5 to 8 where you engage creatively where you love where you have children where you engage with the external world where you do some work uh, where you have gains and losses of life learn through gains and losses of life that's the second 5 to 8 when you go from the pada of uh, sagittarius to pisces the last padas these are the shiva type of energies these are dissolution of energies begins with the mula nakshatra by the way which goes being deep wants to find out the source energy of things wants to find out the reason the deeper reasons and the meanings of life this is the seeking this is the participating in the external karma the number 10th house comes here the 11th house comes here extreme amount of gains losses health issues people learn through this this is the last and the dissolution shiva phase of the padas now you got to remember the dharma pada is in every zodiac in every nakshatra the dharma pada is the first one which is the fire element the artha will be second kama will be three and moksha will be four this is common for all nakshatras so the dharma pada will have either aries leo or sagittarius the artha pada will always have 2 6 and 10 that is taurus virgo and capricorn the kama pada will have signs of um gemini libra and aquarius uh, the 3 7 and 11 and the moksha or the water signs will have the sign of cancer scorpio and pisces the water elements so these will be common to every nakshatra every pada will have these kind of steps we shall see the steps the steps are the most crucial to understanding the propensity and where the soul is going we need this study is about understanding soul paths here this study is about understanding the energies of nakshatra it's not so much focused on the predictive part of it although there is always that this is more on the study part of it Lastly let me describe how the structure of the videos every one of these nakshatra videos I have made it like for ease of understanding I got to explain how I am dealing with each one of these So these are from my notes essentially the structure of the videos will be something like this The picture on the left is how you will see the video this first one for example Ashwini nakshatra and how it is structured is the one on the top right corner top left corner is showing the moon because the lunar mansions and it is showing the symbol of the nakshatra the second part which describes the zodiac okay it also describes the padas so remember this table i have taken from my notes 1 to 12 signs aries the individual fire taurus the sensual earth the quality of the zodiac sign is there whether it is dharma artha kama or moksha is there the sign lord is there okay so that's the second part i have given the details in the little table there under the moon we see the padas which is the dharma pada which is the artha pada which is the kama pada and which is the moksha pada in the natal chart and in the navamsha both will be presented so the first of all the main zodiac is there and then the padas are also there okay and then on the right hand side top corner i am presenting the mantras associated now this is just my personal take on it if you have some other uh, mantra you wish to recite that's up to you i've taken this based on my own intuition and what will work well for that nakshatra why do we need to recite mantra well for one thing the mantras or the sahasra namas are a collection of thousand various forms of the energy that will help in the deciphering and in the proper execution of a person's life path let me just put it that way 
below the sahasranama which i am presenting we are discussing the active ages what ages is this nakshatra active and uh, on the bottom right hand corner i am showing the pie chart and which slice of the pie we are analyzing okay which zodiac sign are we analyzing in that particular video and which nakshatra are we analyzing so we'll go through all the slices of 27 nakshatras in this way on the left hand bottom most corner is the most important of them all it is the energy of the nakshatra what kind of energy is presented what life themes will be affecting this particular individual if you have more number of planets or points in any given nakshatra and the ascendant and or the moon this becomes very dominant theme in your life that's the reason why you need to know this and there is most importantly an associated life lesson what do you need to learn from all this stuff you have got going on in your life that's what we come down to remember where a nakshatra works depends upon which house it falls into in your chart the ascendant nakshatra is the soul energy moon nakshatra is how your mind is working the pada of a planet or a point strongly influences the energy of the nakshatra all right so with that we'll begin the nakshatra series starting from ashwini take care